Hey, so welcome back in this is another system design video. So today I thought we'll go ahead and design Twitter actually. So typically what you would imagine for um, this system design interview, and I find there's a lot of content online, and so I'm just kind of regurgitating a lot of what I've learned and um, a lot of what I've read um, back to this video, and you can uh, give me your own suggestion. So uh, generally for this problem, what you can imagine is there's kind of two core functionalities that you want to do. Kind of the, what I call the write service and the read service. And so the read service would be like uh, essentially your timeline. Um, and that's basically, okay, I want to um, see what is being suggested as you scroll down um, and it kind of paginates as you go down the screen, as well as like when you refresh your content, what is um, the new uh, feeds that have just kind of come up as I've been scrolling on Twitter. Now, naturally, the second service would be the write service uh, is how I like to picture it. And so this would be uh, more your like follow, following other users, as well as creating new posts, so uh, posting. Okay, and so what you can imagine for a lot of these social media apps is that essentially the number of reads vastly, um, vastly is much larger than the number of writes per second. And that's because, well, there's going to be a lot of people um, reading this timeline in comparison to the number of people posting. And so you'd really probably want to scale this to like something like 10 times in order of magnitude um, in comparison to the right service, just because so many people are going to be reading rather than posting. Okay, and so to start here, let's just do like a high level design, which is usually step one. And so what you can imagine is you have your client, all right, and so Let's go ahead and name that client. And so it's going to be interacting and we'll just build out um, one service here at a time. So it's going to be interacting at first and we'll do uh, the reads or no, the right service maybe. And so this would be some load balancer that sits in the middle and be kind of routing to the proper API so we can scale them uh, independently. But maybe that's uh, too far in for the high level design for now, but you can imagine this is a load balancer and it just knows to direct it um, to our uh, write service. So we'll go ahead and name that. This is for our writes. And so from here, um, what you can imagine is that these uh, API calls and what these mostly will be will be a post statements such as like uh, posting a tweet. And so you can imagine um, there will be the tweet itself, uh, maybe your user ID as well as like the, the current date timestamp. All right, and so from here, you might also want to uh, follow. So you want to post a follow. And so this is going to be uh, probably the user ID of that other user, so other user ID, and then maybe your user ID so it knows um, who is doing the following. And then, you know, may, maybe you'd want to unfollow someone as well, but you can imagine um, what this uh, timeline service, or sorry, kind of I call it like the community service um, because it deals with rights, um, is doing. And so from here, you can imagine that we would have two different data stores that we're primarily dealing with. One of them is going to be our static content, so like our images, um, our videos, Twitter supports videos now, uh, as well as maybe GIFs or GIFs, um, whatever you want to call them. And so that would be kind of stored here in this object data store. Uh, because that's kind of, we want to scale it independently of our uh, contextual information. And so that would store in a second data store. And you can kind of debate and um, consider the trade-offs between a SQL data store and a NoSQL one. But for now, we'll go with the SQL data store. And so this will allow us to store just relational data about our uh, tweets that they're doing. So which user posted what tweets as well as who follows who, and so that you can basically join these and return that information um, back to this write service. And so from here, I think that's good enough for the high level design of our write service. But let's go ahead and look at uh, what our read service would look like. So once again, this would scale independently and at a much greater scale as our writes do. So let's go here. This is basically our timeline service. And so from here, you would also imagine, oh, uh, read. You would also imagine that these reads, and there would be something like, okay, we want to, um, let's just write this out. 
this could be something like I uh, get um, new tweets. So get like um, next tweets, as well as maybe if you want to refresh. And so that would be something like, okay, get refresh. And so naturally uh, you'd want to be essentially paginating things. So these would only be returning like at most n tweets. So say if you refresh um, above you, you don't want to return say like a thousand tweets. Say you're on Twitter for a long time and a thousand tweets have kind of piled up. When you kind of scroll down and it refreshes above you, you don't want to have to go through all of those. It will paginate them um, one at a time or 20 at a time, I believe is what they do on Twitter uh, or maybe 10. But anyways, something like that. So you're basically propagating what your current um, post or like the, the timestamp that you're currently at and it will know um, what is the, the next 20 tweets it will return to you. And so from here, um, we'll connect these reads to then be querying our backend SQL data store, which then if there is any uh, static content associated with that tweet, it would then go fetch it from our object data store here. So I think that's good enough for a high level design. So let's kind of delve into how we would actually scale this thing. And so what that would look like is essentially, well, the first thing that usually comes to mind is this static content could be put into a, uh, a CDN. So something like, I think it's called AWS CloudFront. So that these are stored um, just geographically closer to our users so they don't have to have as much a latency um, when they're getting the static content. And so let's just go ahead and put it over here. I usually put it in a cloud. And so let's go ahead and just call this our CDN. And so I won't draw the connection here, but you can imagine that this static content is then being pushed to our CDN, which is geographically closer to our users. And so um, that helps, but then also uh, once again, these writes and these reads are really hitting our SQL data store um, very strongly, and so we want to be able to scale this better. And so let's go ahead and basically just erase this because it will become a little more complicated. Uh, but the first thing that we're going to want to do is scale out our reads because that's, once again, the priority. And so typically when you have a SQL data store, uh, we'll scale basically our writes and our reads separately. And so we'll have read replicas that will basically allow us to um, scale out and so essentially there's going to be a leader uh, data store initially so this will be our leader and this is basically reader one two and three and so we would basically write to the leader so this write data store or write service would write to this node while read service would essentially be um, reading from any of these uh, three read replicas and so that just allows them to scale independently. But the problem here is naturally like this is uh, a cause of concern because there's only one. If there's downtime, uh, you won't be able to write anymore. So you could do something like master uh, to master replication or sorry, leader to leader uh, replication, uh, which is good, but it will cause some extra latency and you really don't want that on something like Twitter. And so what I would propose is something more like uh, sharding, which would then uh, allow us to scale out our writes. So let's go ahead and implement it uh, that way. And so what that will look like is essentially uh, these would then be shards. These remain as our read replicas uh, for these, but these shards would allow us to scale out our writes. And so you could propose a lot of different ways of um, doing out our uh, sharding for our basically our write. Um, nodes, but what I could imagine is you would want a lot of cardinality for this. So probably uh, something like the, uh, maybe the timestamp uh, that could cause some hot shards of say the Super Bowl when there's a lot of sharding, but you could um, mix and match uh, a few different, um, uh, let's say properties such as like the uh, user ID or uh, the post that you're doing uh, with the timestamp, but you definitely want probably the timestamp uh, to have some uh, matching with your um, gets. Because whenever you're fetching for these uh, tweets, all of these queries are going to be based on the timestamp. And so you definitely want to have that in your, uh, basically your key for your shards. 
but depending on uh, whether you want it to be the users, if you know what particular users are often being um, kind of in the same community, that would have a lot of um, benefit because you want all of your query patterns to be located on the same shard. But then also maybe uh, something like the posts uh, would help because there could be a lot of community surrounding a particular post. And so that would have all of your queries remain like in that same shard. Um, but definitely want the timestamp a part of it. Anyways, that's going too far. Um, but naturally, we will be able to scale these writes and these reads uh, independently. And essentially from here, um, we still don't have enough. And so we probably want to have some form of caching to still have less load on our data store. And so it's not all um, on disk, but in memory. And sometimes these caches um, aren't just separate. So it doesn't have to be separate Redis store. It could be kind of in uh, this modern uh, SQL store that we have. But uh, for now, for simplicity, we'll say that we have um, some cache here, um, which then we could basically write to it. And then it could offload uh, those writes into our um, uh, leader up leader shards here. Uh, and that could also uh, simply be just that there could be like a queue here and so that these aren't um, too bogged down. So when you're making this right, it doesn't have to wait till it be offloaded uh, to this uh, leader shard, sorry. Um, but also from here, like um, a lot of what Twitter does is that they, in preparation for you, like they cache uh, what your timeline is going to look like. So it could quickly look up here so it could be used as like a separate service and a separate cache if you had time as to what you would expect um, you'd be able to kind of prepare for when new users log into your app, um, what they would come to expect. But I think that's too far for now. I think this is good uh, for my level of competence and I just want to keep it a high level. So I hope this helped a little bit and good luck with the rest of your preparation. Thanks for watching.